How long did you actually have to plan your wedding, roughly? We got uh, engaged in October, and then we decided to get married within the year. So we had, and we got married in August. Yeah, so we a had little about, less than a year, actually. We had about 10 mm -hmm. months to plan everything. And did you have a specific vision in mind? How did you come up with those things? <laughs> I hated wedding planning. Oh, I, ha I hated every second of it. I was never that girl who was like, oh, I can't wear to wear a big white dress and have flowers. I was like, oh, I want a small wedding. But then I was outvoted by everybody. <laughs> and so we ended Why up having- Why did you do this? Because like, you, I, I was, I was like, outvoted by everybody. <laughs> um, I was just going along with things. I would have been fine. And by small, I mean like 250 people. We ended up having 550 people at oh the wedding. Oh my God, Which wow. was, beast of a wedding. After a while, I, I was just going for the record. I was and like, then, let's just go, you know, let's just keep going. I know, he liked it. And then I was like, no, I mean, every everybody we had is like, yeah. we have to find a place for them to sit and we have to do all the stuff. I was stuff. inviting like the mailman, oh, the, the I gardener. hated it. The whole process was, was torture, every, st every step of it. So was it worse than you expected? Yes. Oh, okay, so. Yes. <laughs> I started it being like, this is going to be awful. And then the longer it went, I was like, this, I didn't realize how awful this is going to be. It's frustrating. We chose a venue that could have a lot of people in there. You know, I mean, we, we chose Bagramyan, which has a huge capacity. So already that was a mistake, because then parents are like, oh, if we could fit 550 <laughs> let's people, just let's just 500. have 550 people. <laughs> we had to reorder invitations twice, which was stressful. At the, the last week, telling my florist that I needed like eight more centerpieces than I thought, telling every, like our caterer thought we were only gonna have like 400 people and I had to call them like three weeks and I was like, the number's 550 now. <laughs> It was just a lot. The, the photography people were paying me oh, ass. The photographers. <laughs> they were awesome. Annie <laughs> Studios. Yes. They're the best. Yes. And the thing is, because I didn't want to go with like the only vendors I met. So with each each thing, except for catering and music, I met with at least four different vendors to see who gave me the best price, who I liked personally the most. So that was also just like meeting with all these people and then the like having to tell them that you're not gonna work with them. And it's just like, you know, I mean, ugh. The whole process was- And I had to hear like, about it. Oh, and all the money you have to spend on it. And like the checks you're constantly writing. And I'm just really happy it's over. Mm. <laughs> now we got a whole lot of free time. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I feel like I have PTSD from having a wedding. Oh, wow. Somebody <laughs> said to me, they're like, do you feel like you have to be doing something? I'm like, yeah, for 10 months, I was like, I have, I have to do this, 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 and this. Now I don't. Now I'm just kind of <laughs> like, okay, I guess I don't have to do anything. And it's this weird adjustment to normal life before planning a wedding. So then we got a dog to <laughs> occupy our free time. So how no. many venues did you actually see? Like 10 venues? I called more than that. Because also a lot of the venues are booked up and we knew we wanted to get married on Saturday. I can't believe how quickly some of these Armenian venues book up. And then wedding dress shopping was the worst experience of my life. <laughs> Let's hear about that. Oh my God. First of all, I'm a thick woman. So I go into some of these stores, <laughs> like bridal size, I'm maybe like a 14, maybe even a 16. Some of these places had like samples in a size four or a size eight. <laughs> I'm like, who do you think is walking in here? I went to some stores in Glendale and they had them. I'm like, do you not know Armenian women are curvy walking in here? I couldn't even zip up half of them. And then like whatever dresses could fit were like, an astronomical amount of money. The thing is, you would tell some of these women, you'd be like, this is my budget. And they bring you a dress that's like three times your budget. And they don't tell you that. And then you put it on and it, you look like a princess and you're like, this is amazing. And they're like, well, it's this much. And I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna like take out a mortgage on my condo to pay for this <laughs> stupid dress that I'm gonna wear. <laughs> so once. it was once. I probably went to 20 different stores over the course of two months just looking for dresses. That might set a record right there. Yeah, yeah. it's awful. <laughs> oh, it's awful. So How after, many stores did you I, I went to a men's warehouse, uh, rent, <laughs> rented a tux for $200. And how did you know when you picked the one? Was there a dress that you just fell in love with or was it like store number 20 and you're just so tired of? 
I think shopping. it's more the second one. Okay. I liked my dress a lot. No, I mean, I liked my dress a lot, but I was also like just over it. So it, it fit me, it looked good, it was the style I had wanted, and I was like, I'm just, I'm gonna take this one. But I, that moment that they talk about where you put on a dress and you like cry, and you're like, oh my God, this is the dress. <laughs> and like everyone around you is crying. Oh, yeah. We didn't have that. <laughs> my mom, it was just my mom and me and we were both like, okay, let's do it. I guess. I guess. <laughs> and they try to put it, they always have like a veil they put on you and they give you a book, like a fake bouquet of flowers to like feed into that whole like, you're gonna be a princess. The whole thing you realize very quickly is a racket. The bridal dress industry is a racket and they're like very like, this is the dress that you're gonna wear, you're gonna look at these photos for your whole life. And the whole, I was just like, I wish I cared, I don't care. Does it bug you how much I negatively I talk about it? I had a uh, bridal journal and it was the whole, all day I was just like, what do you <laughs> Can we get a couple pages from your bridal journal oh, for the vlog? Oh. I think that'd be hilarious. It's color coded too. <laughs> Did you use hardsetting.com to help find any of your vendors? I did, actually. I used it a lot. One thing I realized is if you're gonna have a big Armenian wedding, you need to have Armenian vendors. When you tell a florist that you have 45 tables and that your budget is this much, most American vendors will be like, there's no way I could do that. But Armenian vendors yeah, are like, they're like, you I know, got well, it. we got to insure this yeah. and get these people in unions. <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah. Like even, <laughs> even when we told Ani Studio, it was like, oh yeah, you got to be at Tax House at 11 and you know, like our house at noon. If you told American photographers like, yeah, it's going to be like a 12 hour day. They'd be like, what? No, why? <laughs> What do I have to film in the beginning? Why are they dancing? What are they bringing? Yeah. Honey Studios camped out in front of my parents' house the night before <laughs> at a tent. I remember trying to go to like The Knot or what is it, Wedding Wire? Yeah. And then, uh, and then I was just like, hard signing is just easy. And I, I found, I would say I found most of my vendors on our side. Oh, that makes me so happy. So thank you. Oh, yeah. thank you. Did you have a bridal shower, Sona? No, I don't know what it's for. <laughs> Nobody could give me a solid answer. Do you know what it's for? An excuse what? to celebrate, it's really. It's kind of like a bachelorette party, right? Sort of. Mm, no, Which you had. I just, I didn't understand what the point of it was. So I, if somebody brought it up, they're like, are you gonna do a, a bridal shower? And I was like, if I don't need to, no. Our pre-wedding photos were a lot of fun. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. You guys went to Malibu? Yeah, to um, El Matador. Yeah. Yeah. How, why'd you pick that location? We um, didn't think about it too much. Like the day of that morning, I woke up and I'm like, are we really gonna go frolic on a beach right now? Like, and we did. <laughs> and it was high tide, so the second we stepped on the beach, like from the waist down, I was soaked. <laughs> And then for some reason, Tack had his phone in his pocket. Yeah, I don't know why. And, every and my five wallet minutes, he's like, and all my guys, my 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 phone's gonna get wet. <laughs> our our photographers just did a really good job of capturing both of us and how we are and how like playful we are and how we just don't take ourselves very seriously. And they like really got to know our personalities mm -hmm. and then tailored everything to that. When it comes to taking posed photos, it's always like. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else is, Tack was missing his, one of his front teeth for like most of our engagement. The day that I got Sona's engagement ring, my tooth just goes crack. <laughs> and it's not even a back, it was like in the yeah. front, like right here. So in a lot of our pictures, like oh, on the yeah. ceremony <laughs> and at Conan's house for our engagement party, like it's like, a, it's like I'm marrying a hillbilly. <laughs> Thanks, Pip. <laughs>